What's up everyone, Adrian Morrison here and I am in Shopify HQ with a, a very special person whom I'm a guest of here in Shopify, uh, the COO Harley here for a, a short little interview, just some questions about Shopify that he's willing to answer. I know he's very, very busy so this won't be long, but um, thank you so much for uh, Happy to be here. having me yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pleasure. And, uh, uh, you're a great partner and someone we really uh, love working with. Thank you, I appreciate it. Your offices are awesome. This room is freaking nuts, right? Um, yeah, I won't, I won't take up too much of your time, but I am gonna ask you some stuff that's written on a phone because everybody that knows me knows that I'm usually just talking off the top of my head. Uh, but some questions that are, are really cool that people like to hear. Um, Shopify is, is blown up over the last couple of years. And for me personally, when I, when I started e-commerce, I had a couple of different options to choose from, Amazon, eBay, all that stuff. But I saw Shopify and said, this is the platform that I know is going to be the best for me and it's the easiest to get started with. Why is Shopify winning so many people over like me and everybody else? I think a couple of reasons. Um, I think it starts with empathy. Shopify is a software that we ourselves wanted to find uh, when Toby was trying to sell snowboards and, and I was trying to sell t-shirts. And so in many ways, um, Shopify is software built for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. And I think we take a very different approach to it because, again, we are we're merchants first and foremost. I put myself through school selling t-shirts online, and Toby, uh, when he moved to Canada, he started selling snowboards online. So I think we just understand what um, internet entrepreneurs are going going through in a way that most other companies don't understand that. Um, relative to some of the other marketplaces, for example, I think the big difference is that the people that they care most about are the end consumer. And although we compare, we, we care about the end consumer as well, the people we truly care about, this whole reason that you have more than 2,000 people at Shopify focused all day long on building great software, we care about merchants, entrepreneurs. And so I think um, that is really important. You see that in, in a bunch of different ways. So the fact that it's so easy to get started on Shopify, but then as your business grows and you have more complexity, the solutions to that complexity almost reveals itself at the right time. So when you're starting a new store, a new business on Shopify, you may not need cross-border task compliance, right? It's something you need when you go really big. But the second you need it, it sort of just appears for you. Or you may need things like, you may need to sell cross-channel. Maybe you want to sell uh, in person, or you want to sell in, in a brick and mortar location. And so those new channels selling in a brick and mortar store using Shopify point of sale, those things emerge themselves at the right time. And so we make the, um, the important things easy and everything else possible. And I think that's led to us, a lot of people really liking our software. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you on that and the fact that I feel like with Shopify, you're more likely to be able to build your own brand. Right. You know, with everything else, it's their name right. instead of yours. So what's really cool about your platform is that it is easy, but what really drew me to it was the ability to easily build my own brand. And, and if you look at some, you know, look at some of my favorite stores. So uh, today on the way to work, I, I wrote a boosted board, which is a motorized skateboard, super cool so product. Nice. And I have my Herschel backpack. So those are just two things I wore today. Um, if you go to Herschel, uh, which is a great backpack company, or go to boosted board, um, their stores, you don't even see Shopify. Shopify is totally hidden. Mm -hmm. And we are, not only are we okay with it, we, we love being a brand behind the brand. We love being a brand to entrepreneurs and to merchants. And we're okay with not being a brand to consumers. I think that's uh, that makes it really unique. It certainly does. And uh, the next question is: tons of big, massive businesses are shutting down. Brick and mortar businesses. I mean, every time I get online, I read that a Kmart shutting down or a Wet Seal or whatever, maybe a Sears. Um, and it's because of e-commerce. That's what everybody keeps saying. So, why do you think e-commerce is? killing these big brands, brick and mortar stores right now? So I actually don't think e-commerce per se is killing these big stores. I think it's a little deeper than that. I think that, first of all, a lot of these big stores, they look at commerce as being binary. It's either one or the other. It's either online or it's offline, which to me is a very, um, it's a dated philosophy. To me, commerce happens everywhere. If you want to sell a product to me, I, I want to buy it online. That's how I like to buy it. But my wife loves an online store, but she may also want to walk into a pop-up to try on the jacket, even though she's going to complete the transaction online. Sure. And if you want to sell to my sister, um, cross-selling on Facebook or Pinterest is probably a really good thing to do because that's where she spends their time. So fundamentally, this, this isn't very different than what happened hundreds of years ago. Hundreds of years ago, shopkeepers and merchants, they set up their store in, in a town square because that's where people congregated. Well, today in 2017, people congregate 
all over, but mostly online, right? Facebook, Pinterest, uh, on, on, on the internet. And so it's really important that these big retailers begin to realize that even if your online business is growing, but your offline business is shrinking, it doesn't mean your business is over. It just means that consumer preference is dictating that you sell more online than you do offline. That's the first piece. The second piece is that the reason that I was willing to walk into a Kmart or a Best Buy 15 years ago and buy a skateboard from them is because they had distribution. They were physically located in my town, in my city, right? And this is before e-commerce really hit its, hit its stride. So I was willing to pay 50% more to Best Buy than I would be paying if I went direct to the manufacturer because they had the store there and that was the value they added, they had distribution. But the internet has now completely democratized distribution. So now when I walk into a Best Buy and I buy a skateboard there, they now have to justify to me why am I giving them 50% more than I would if I went direct to the consumer. And I don't believe these stores are justifying their value add. Them just being there, being present, is not enough to justify that 50% uh, increase. I would much prefer to buy directly from the person making the product or someone who's reselling the product because they're curating it and they have a great catalog and they're knowledgeable about it. So um, I think those two reasons are, 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 are two of the major factors why uh, retail is changing. And to be honest with you, uh, as, as a retail history buff, the first um, department store in the world was created in Philadelphia in 1876 by a guy named John Wanamaker famous politician slash entrepreneur. And I think retail has been pretty boring for the last 130, 140 years. I, agree. I actually think the next five years, so really between 2017 and, and 2022 or so, we are going to have more interesting things happen in retail than in the last 130, 140 years. And um, I think entrepreneurs that are savvy, that understand technology, with the help of people like you, who's coaching them through it, and Shopify, um, they're the ones that are gonna win long term. Hit the nail on the head if you ask me. Um, and I agree with you on the fact that it's harder to justify such big markups in places like Best Buy. That's right. And just putting a DJ in your store, that's not enough anymore, right? right yeah. When I walk into a big department store and I look at that boosted board that they're selling, and I ask them, what is the range on this boosted board relative to the last generation? And they tell me they don't even know what that means. Yeah. That is a poor experience because I would much prefer to go to a, an online store where there's a little bit of a chat window that pops up and I could say, so what's the new range relative to the last model? And they give me a great explanation. That is value add for me. I'm willing to spend more money now because they've enriched my buying experience. And I think the big department stores, they just got lazy. They're losing focus, yeah. for sure. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, okay, how about this? Uh, why do you think complete newbies are coming to Shopify and getting stores started so easily? Because I know that in my training, all of my students' experience is that before I never thought I could have an online store, and now in under 30 minutes, I have something up and running with at least one product listed for sale. I think there is an advantage to being a newbie or to being a first-time entrepreneur. There is no scar tissue. When I talk to people that have ran multiple stores over very many years, um, in some cases, I almost have to reteach them um, how to do things, as opposed to first-time entrepreneurs, um, they kind of have a blank canvas in their in their mental construct of how to build a business. I think that's incredibly valuable, and so I think that that level of um, open-mindedness, that lack of scar tissue, coupled with I don't even know what you'd call it this this excitement, this passion of like, I'm gonna start my own business, I think that leads to, uh, to success. And I think that, um, you know, the reason I think most people don't start businesses is one of two reasons. Either they find it too complicated or it's too expensive. And I think you and, and, and me and Shopify, we've all proven that that's not the case. If you know how to use email, you can build a store on Shopify in a matter of hours, right? right? Especially with your help. Um, and so the, in terms of the technical know-how you require, it's quite low. On the price side, what's great about building a business in 2017 is that the cost of failure is trending towards zero. Now, it's not zero because there's still the opportunity cost of your time, right? Which you're foregoing by doing that. But it's getting pretty close, which means that you can try something and if it works, great. And if it doesn't, you try something else. And that may be the thing that, that works. But if you compare that to generations ago when they were starting a business, they'd have to take out a mortgage on their house. They'd have to go take a bank loan. They were putting their families in jeopardy in some case, and you and I have had similar experiences with our families going through some really crappy right. um, you know, financial hardship. Um, that is no longer the case in 2017, and so I think that is a recipe for success for so many new entrepreneurs. Yeah, I agree with you on that. And, you know, when I first started, 
my first e-commerce business with my brother 10 years ago, I think just to build the store ourselves was around $10,000. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, I can go on Shopify and for free for seven days or whatever, then 20 bucks or so, I can at least have something live. That's exactly right. It's, it's amazing. Look, I, uh, maybe about 10 years ago, uh, or about 10 years ago or so, I was in law school and I just found out that I had to start paying my own tuition, helping my family, and I need to support myself somehow. And so um, I found out about Shopify. I was one of the first customers, first merchants on Shopify's platform. I knew Toby. Uh, I built an online t-shirt store sitting in tax law class. Tax law is really boring. Uh, I, I would recommend a class for anyone. But sitting in that one class, that one three hour class, I built an entire store on Shopify. We sold licensed t-shirts. And by the end of that, that, that class, I was competing against Walmart and Sears and, and these huge companies that, was, that were also selling these licensed t-shirts. That wasn't possible 20 years ago. That to me is completely democratizing entrepreneurship and it's making it easier for people that have an idea, have some hustle, some, some passion to build incredible things. So it's, um, it's pretty amazing. So if you take anything from this, it's if you're in school during class, build a Shopify store. <laughs> Um, <laughs> my daughter's gonna be watching this video at some point and be like, Dad, I, you know, like, I, 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 you told me not to be distracted in class, and Adrian said it's okay, and thank you. Well, for that. I mean, yeah. you know, that's how it is. Um, it, another great question is a lot of people, um, they have to choose between investing in education or kind of shooting from the hip. For me, I wasn't fortunate enough to have somebody sit me down and teach me how to do a Shopify store. Um, it was just already easy to begin with. But then there's the marketing side of it. Um, so people always are trying to choose, should I invest in education or should I shoot from the hip? What is your, what is your experience with that? Are you seeing merchants have more success when they educate themselves or just shoot from the hip? So unequivocally, if they educate themselves or they work with people like you and they, they, they read up on the, on the content, they will have more success. Now, um, it's funny because you hear about these one-off stories of some guy or some girl who just sets up a store and overnight they make $5 million or something right. like that. Yeah. Those are few and far between. In terms of, um, if you want to mitigate the risk and you want to maximize your likelihood of success, working with people that know what they're doing, getting advice, getting mentorship, reading some books on, on the topic, that is always going to be incredibly helpful. And yes, it does take a little bit more time to do that, but I think longer term, you will have much more success. And uh, even when I was in, you know, building my first online store, selling these t-shirts, um, I surrounded myself by mentors. It took me a long time to find these mentors, but I had mentors that really helped me. And, and I was able to say, look, I'm thinking about, you know, launching an ad with these keywords versus these keywords. What do you think about that? I'm um, thinking about advertising this platform versus that one. What do you think about that? Um, there was far less of a community of e-commerce entrepreneurs 10 years ago than there is today. And so if I was doing a, if I was building a, a new online business today, unequivocally, I, I would use that. Um, it's one of the reasons why we also, similar to you, we invest so much in things like our blog and the content that we produce because um, it's not to sell more Shopify stores. It's to, it's to ensure those entrepreneurs, whether they're building on Shopify or any other platform, have a higher likelihood of success. Um, and the, the entire goal of this company is to create more entrepreneurs. Um, we yeah. just think that's, that's a pretty damn good goal. Yeah, and why try to fail your way to success when you can you have it? Right. When it's right in front of you. And yeah. uh, so uh, I would say if I was starting a store today, I, I, uh, I'm not trying to say this is a flattery, but I probably would take your course. <laughs> uh, and, and I, I mean that, not, not, not because um, I'm trying to be kind, more because selfishly I want to be more successful. And if I can learn from someone who's already done it, I'm going to do that. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah. Thank you for that. No problem. Uh, last question. You said that over the next couple of years you think e-commerce is going to have some huge things come about. Where do you, what do you see in the future of e-commerce? And you know, more importantly, how is Shopify going to play a role as a leader in all of these things? So I think the biggest... Let me, let me tell a quick story. When I was eight years old, um, I'm not really a gamer, but when I was eight years old, I think most eight-year-old dudes kind of get into video games at some point. So when I was eight years old, I, I, was, I was into video games. Uh, I think at the time I was using probably, um, uh, it must have been like a Super Nintendo or something like that, maybe even first generation Nintendo. But every couple of months, this big new release of some new game came out, like the new Donkey Kong came out. Yeah. And my dad and I would line up outside the video game store at like seven o'clock in the morning. And then at eight o'clock in the morning, the doors would open and a bunch of kids and their dads would rush in into the store and grab whatever they could. And it kind of felt like a bit of a circus. That to me is an example of where the retailer was dictating to the consumer how the purchase should be made. 
right? It was all about the retailer's choice. Right. I think the biggest shift that's happened in e-commerce and commerce in general is that today, the consumers are being far more opinionated about the way they want to make a purchase. And so I think the future of retail is really going to be retail everywhere. They may go to your online store to learn about the product, maybe even make the purchase, but you may also want to experiment with doing a pop-up store. You may also want to cross-sell on something like Facebook or something like Pinterest. You may want to cross-sell on a marketplace to figure out whether or not your product market fit. So if you don't know if someone's going to buy your product, you can go and try to sell it on Amazon and see whether or not maybe that, that works for you as well. But fundamentally, I think the future retail is retail everywhere. And um, that's what we, that's what, that's why you're seeing products being built at Shopify that go beyond just the normal e-commerce and go beyond that into other areas and other venues. But I think the big change is going to be consumer choice. And um, I think that's amazing. I agree with you 100%. You know, I'm from Mississippi, so a lot of the stores there are, you know, pretty much behind. And they're only selling to the small population, the small community. And what's really cool is your point of sale. So you can have a brick and mortar store still, but you can then go in with Shopify and access just millions more potential customers and take a small little business in Madison, Mississippi and turn it into whatever you want. Right? Look, we're sitting here from Ottawa, Canada, right? Canada itself is a very small country. There's about 30 something million people here. Ottawa is the capital, but it's a pretty small all city. Um, we have friends, businesses locally here, Shopify stores like La Bottega or PremiumMeats.ca that are selling to a global audience. That was impossible 20 years ago. And so all those people that are watching this video or that you meet with that, you know, they work some job they don't really love and they go home and they tinker in their garage or they make children's toys in their basement nights and weekends, just their passion project. I think another big shift that's going to happen, it's not just for e-commerce, but for human beings in general, is I think more people will begin to commercialize their hobby. They will take the thing that they love doing most and they will make a, they will make a living from it, as opposed to make, this, make it this sort of hobby, the side business. I think they will make it their thing, their life's work, and I think that is incredibly exciting. You know, you're right. Uh, the last thing I'll add to that is on what you said, I have a student that is now doing over a million and a half dollars a month selling his own little product that he and his buddy created. Uh, they had basically had no money when they started, but they had this product and they found Shopify to put on your platform and now Harley Davidson and all of these other big companies are wanting to put their product on their shelf. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And the best part is I have 400,000 stories just like that. I mean, that's the coolest part of it. Uh, but sitting in my, um, sitting here from Shopify and looking at all these incredible businesses being built that simply were not built 10, 20, 30 years ago. And these people don't have a lot of money. Um, in fact, many of them have no money whatsoever, but they have creativity and they have some passion about it. And um, that's, that's, that's it. That's the best part. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for having me here. Your offices are insane. Okay. If you're watching this, um, I'm probably going to do a tour later on do a of tour, the offices yeah, yeah. and a uh, huge honor to be up here. I know your time is valuable. So thanks so much for That's having me. Appreciate it. If you enjoyed the, uh, the interview, comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks for watching.